Hello everybody, welcome to the tutorial on Dieppe. Um, we'll call this Operation Jubilee and uh, ask ourselves the big question, was uh, the Dieppe raid a valuable lesson for the Allies or was it just a costly blunder? Once again we can revisit the Second World War timeline for Canada. Uh, you can see here that if we're looking at Dieppe, we're looking at not the 1st Division, as we were in, in Italy, but we're looking at soldiers from the 2nd Division. You can see that they were training in England all the way up until the Normandy invasion. Uh, the one interruption in that is the Dieppe raid in August of 1942. You can see from the outline here how we'll deal with this. We'll look at the plan and the preparation. Then we'll look at the actual events of the raid. Then we'll break it down to look at some of the specialty forces, specifically the commandos and the Royal Air Force. There are lots of interesting conclusions to draw from this. Okay, so first we'll talk about the plan. As we've said before, it's important to remember that the Canadian Army was in England since 1940. Uh, however, in all of the time that they were in England, they were concerning themselves with training, not actual fighting. It's also uh, important for us to take into consideration that Russia had taken the brunt of the German forces since the summer of 1941. The exception to this, of course, is the battle against Rommel's Africa Corps in North Africa. So Lord Mountbatten, who is a relative of the king, comes up with a plan to do a one-day reconnaissance in force uh, on a French coastal town. The idea here is to test the defenses of Hitler's Atlantic Wall. Uh, the Atlantic Wall was the first barrier to what is called Fortress Europe. The Allies wanted to test their own tactics, but also to take some prisoners to see if they could get some valuable intelligence. Again, uh, as we've mentioned before, Canada wanted to have a chance to do something in the war. Apart from uh, the events in Hong Kong where the two Canadian battalions were very quickly overcome by the Japanese forces, uh, Canada had only been training. That is, of course, except for the Navy and the Air Force. In terms of the plan, uh, one interesting point, uh, about a month earlier, uh, there had been um, an operation called Operation Rutter, and that was uh, unfortunately discovered by uh, German planes and and the uh, flotilla was bombed uh, before it was uh, en route and so uh, of course they had to uh, to uh, stand down the operation and then the operation was reborn as Operation Jubilee. So this was the plan. The forces would leave from Portsmouth in southern England uh, they wouldn't take the shortest route of cr across. Of course, a lot of people would think, why wouldn't the Allies attack here? Um, uh, we can see that no, in fact, they take uh, one of the wider sections across, pass through a suspected, suspected part of the enemy minefield to land at Dieppe. And you can see in relation to Dieppe where the actual Normandy landings were in 1944. So this is the plan looking from the other perspective. You can see that uh, there were four main beaches that were going to be landed at. Uh, each beach was given a, a coded color. Um, and then there were two beaches on the outsides, uh, yellow beach here and orange beach here. And uh, these were where the uh, special forces or the commandos were going to do their, their attack. You can see that, uh, that uh, the harbor of Dieppe has a seawall around it. Uh, you can also see from the illustration that there are high cliffs on either side of the harbor. Uh, this map looks confusing, but uh, the main purpose of it is to show that uh, most of the forces that attacked were Canadian forces. There were some Royal Marines in the center. There were also, interestingly enough, 50 United States Rangers. Uh, this is the same uh, type of soldier that was in the movie Saving Private Ryan. Um, and this, of course, was uh, early on in the American experience in Europe. And so the idea was to give some American Special Forces some real life uh, experience under fire. 
Uh, you can also see here uh, Orange Beach and Yellow Beach where the uh, the commandos are gonna are going to attack and their um, objective is to hit some German coastal batteries but for the most part you can see that it's Canadian infantry uh, supported by some Canadian tanks from the Royal pardon me from the Calgary tank regiment now before Operation Rudder and Operation Jubilee uh, the soldiers of the 2nd Division had been uh, practicing heavily in beach assaults. The rumor at the time amongst the soldiers was that the attack would be uh, actually against the Germans in Norway. It's important for us to remember that Norway was occupied by the Nazis very early on in the war. Um, and so this is a, a logical uh, place for the Allies to, to focus. Unfortunately for the uh, Allied attackers, uh, at 9.30 at night, uh, on the night before the, uh, the raid, a German patrol boat um, bumped into uh, part of the convoy that held the attackers. Uh, it was the convoy that had the, uh, the commandos that were heading to Yellow Beach. And so um, the, the element of surprise was perhaps compromised. This is a good photograph showing the main landing. Uh, it's important to understand that uh, not only are there landing crafts, but there are uh, Navy ships that are holding soldiers, and the soldiers will then transfer from the, the, the larger ships onto the smaller landing crafts. Now, the Canadian general in charge of this operation was General Roberts. Uh, HMS Calpy was the flagship that he used as his headquarters. Um, unfortunately, because of the delays in crossing the channel, the attack, while it was supposed to occur at dawn, occurred at about 8 a.m. in broad daylight and um, there is no doubt that the the element of surprise was lost by the attackers. It's also important to recognize that because the general was not on land he was on, on, on a ship and uh, electronic communications of the day weren't uh, as good as they are now there was a huge communication breakdown and even uh, when the situation on the beach was realized by the by the attackers to have been lost they were unable to get word back to the general and so reinforcements continued to be sent uh, even though it was uh, a lost cause this is a good illustration so showing uh, soldiers from the Cameron Highlanders in Winnipeg uh, disembarking onto their landing craft So the Royal Navy ships are able to uh, lay smoke to try to conceal the uh, landing craft and give the soldiers some uh, form of uh, protection from uh, observation as they're approaching the beaches. Another shot showing, showing Canadian soldiers looking over the prow of a landing craft as they're approaching the beach. And an artist's impression of the actual attack. Um, there was horrendous small arms machine gun fire and uh, artillery fire and also uh, attack from German bombers uh, so it was uh, almost the perfect killing ground uh, as far as the German soldiers were concerned. This shot uh, shows very well the high cliffs on either end of the beach. Uh, the Germans had uh, weapons on, on these uh, two cliffs and so they could rake down the whole length of the beach. There was absolutely no cover for the Canadians. This picture also shows uh, the rocks that made up the beach. This is called a shingle beach. Uh, the rocks are uh, about fist sized. And uh, unfortunately, when a vehicle tries to drive on, on uh, this sort of a surface, it has no traction. And, it, and as the tracks of the tanks turned, they just dug themselves down into the beach. So if you've uh, never walked on a pebble beach, it's pretty much like having a beach full of ball bearings. There's, uh, there's no friction between the rocks, or at least low friction between the rocks. And as the uh, caterpillar treads on the tank's turn, um, the, the vehicle just sinks. So you can see uh, uh, this tank here is, has dug itself right down to the hull of the vehicle. These pipes on the side are, are um, designed to be attached to the air intake on the, on the vehicle so that the vehicle can forward uh, in 
uh, water without uh, drowning the engine.